Hello. Um, so I just wanted to go through some of the basics on Motion Builder so you have something to refer to if I'm busy or not here. And um, it's a like anything like Maya or Max, it's a kind of a big complicated program. Um, but there are some things that are uh, fundamental that also um, took me a long time to really get down. So I'm hoping that I hit a few of those things to make it a little bit easier for you to use the application. So I've got it open now. I've got a bunch of the uh, windows on another screen. I'll bring them over one at a time. The reason I'm not bringing them all over at once is in trying to make things nice. Uh, Autodesk auto like compiles all these windows together and it's really hard to keep them from doing this and it's really irritating when they do. Um, I really use my multiple monitors with this app like I'm sure you guys do on Maya but I know you all um, not all of you have multiple monitors here at Universal to work with so I will bring them over and uh, show them off as I need them. So this is the main viewer window. Um, you can go to, I believe it's uh, not layout, settings, interaction mode and tell it to look like Maya. It doesn't work exactly like Maya but it does its best and I find that easier when going back and forth between the apps. So alt, left button, rot rotates or gimbals the camera, uh, middle button right and left, pans, and then uh, right button while uh, alt is down, zooms in and out. So I find that much easier to remember since it's uh, I'm going back and forth with Maya a lot. Um, some of the other things are consistent with Maya, but some aren't. So. Uh, I may or may not remember those because I've been using both applications so long and I apologize for any errors of omission I make. So there's the viewer window where your 3D components will e exist. Um, you can import this, or open if it's already an FBX file. If you saved as an XBF, FBX file from Maya, uh, you can use open. If you want to bring something else into a file, another FBX file, you can hit merge and it'll bring both files together. Um, anything that's named the same will try to take properties of it and smash them into the properties of the one that exists. Sometimes that works well, many times it does not. I try to avoid merging the same object over the top of each other. Um, sometimes it works when I've made some modeling changes in Maya. Um, right now I don't have a link to Maya directly because I'm uh, I have 2016 installed because Maya didn't seem real stable if I had 2017 installed the send to Maya button or uh, menu item would be uh, on and I could go back and forth to Maya easier to make changes like if I need to make modeling changes or um, uh, paint weights or do something like that sometimes that's really useful but there are limitations, things it doesn't do well when it's going back and forth. Um, same with Cindamax. Sometimes I use it more often than not. Um, I export to FBX, but uh, Ying has suggested that some of the things that don't go back and forth well to F through FBX may work if we use the send to Maya or send to 3D Max options. Okay, so. Um, uh, you can bring in stuff that way, of course. Um, there's also uh, ways to bring in objects uh, in Motion Builder, but if you don't have modeling capability, really, all you can do is bring in um, primitives and then scale them or translate them or rotate them. So if I went to Elements here, uh, this is the Asset Browser. This is where you go to bring things into the scene. Um, so it's usually a, a critical little thing that I have off to the side. Usually I put it in the corner of my second window because um, I'm always needing another null to parent things and a cube or something or a, or a cylinder. Um, there's primitives listed under the elements. So some of the general elements are here. Um, 3D curves. You can make a 3D curve. It's not a very robust system. It's uh, prone to error and um, curves or uh, wires don't come in well from Maya, but there are times when it's really handy to uh, use that. If you don't have a um, ride track animation that's been baked or something, you can simulate it. Um, I've just had trouble with some of the um, uh, Bezier curve controls. 
uh, primitives, cylinders, cubes, etc. So let's just bring in a cylinder. Um, w, E, and R should bring up uh, the translation controls, rotation, and scale, just like in Maya. Um, if you want to change the uh, pivot point, uh, insert as in Maya. However, once you move it where you want to, let's say I move this down so I can scale from near the bottom, uh, hitting insert again doesn't take you out of it. You have to press Q. The Q button takes it back out of it, and then you can hit W, uh, Q, and R, and do the normal things with it. So now the pivot's down there, that's where it's going to pivot from, <clears throat> which is helpful sometimes if I'm building things out of cylinders, because that's a quick way for me to make things, you know, make a bar of steel or something if I'm trying to simulate a um, lift component or anything. Uh, but if you actually want to control where it's pivoting from and be able to translate it, um, the easiest thing for me anyway is to go ahead and add a null. So you go back to elements and there's a null listed here on the panel. You drag it. If you drag it over an object, it should center itself on that object, which is something I find very handy. If Maya does that, I haven't ever managed to pull that off. So here it's going to pivot from the center um, once I parent it. Okay, so to show how to do parenting, since I'm kind of doing basic stuff one at a time, I'm bringing over the navigator. So this is the second most critical window. I, the asset browser is I keep up all the time because I do need to put things into the scene once in a while, but managing the scene with nodes is something you do in the navigator. It also usually comes with F curves, but you can also bring that up as a separate window if you need to. Um, dope sheet, I don't use that much, but you know it's uh, got its animation uh, applications. Story, I don't use that much. That's often used more for um, building things for um, mocap, building mocap sequences. Animation trigger is uh, uh, for game support to be able to uh, simulate run cycles, walk cycles, and allow you to manipulate um, when sequences are triggered. Uh, I've used that on uh, applications for some theme park attractions, but I don't usually use it for what we do here most of the time. 90% of the time what I use out of this is navigator and f-curves. And I usually keep f-curves up as a separate window. It won't drag out from here. Um, if you want to make uh, f-curves a separate window, you go back to the main menu and you go down to f-curves and click it and it'll make a new one. And I think I already had one off the side. Yep, so I've got doubles. You, you can't see it though because it's on another screen. Sorry I'm talking too fast, I just do that. So I'm going to apologize and then continue to do it. So in the navigator on the this list, this is all the objects that are in this that are related to the scene currently. Um, the first list is the scene components, which is everything, all the models, everything that's in your scene that you can see. Um, any lights you add will show up here, any cameras you add will show up here. Anything you add from these other um, categories will show up here, but it's handy because this list gets big and buried to be able to go and you know look at the cameras specifically. Um, on any of these other categories you can right click on the top um, uh, layer level of it and insert a new camera. You know, Right click to rename, you can't just double click to rename, you have to right click and rename. And if this was an RV right cam I could put it there. Notice that when I made the camera it made a camera interest also. A place the camera is looking to so I usually make sure that when I rename things I rename that also because I'm likely to be using it in conjunction with what I'm doing. Often I'll assign the cameras to uh, vehicles or to specific places that I don't want to have to refine, just like you do in Maya, of course. Um, and I, I use the interest to uh, show the character, the uh, guest point of view a lot of the time. So I do usually make a couple extra cameras. Most of the time I'm working with the perspective, though. And 
Okay, so back in the scene, I've got this null that I just made and a cylinder. Um, unlike Maya, where you middle click and drag, you can left click and drag to repair it. You have to tell it that's what you want to do. I want to repair it. So I just drag cylinder into null. Um, because you're not using because of the way they did it to try to make it easier and they aren't using the middle uh, mouse button right? uh, you can't unparent as easy basically you right click and then say you want to unparent you can't just go um, up another node it won't let you but you can't unparent basically you can go you can take it to any other object and parent it but if you wanted just to go up to the scene level, it won't let you. You have to right click, unparent, confirm, and then it'll pop it up to the scene level. Um, I only mention that because it's a annoying pain. It's, and it's different than Maya, so I, I have to remember it every single time. So anyway, now my null is the parent of the cylinder. And if I select the null, you know, it behaves as such. Um, I prefer to animate things on nulls or joints um, for the simple reason that uh, I get myself in trouble sometimes when I um, are, am doing it on the model. Um, also, I try really hard not to uh, parent things to models and parent them to nulls for the same reason. I need to move things around when I'm adjusting components and uh, it's easy to once things get a little deep in the structure to forget which things are affecting which things and manipulating the pivot on the model uh, undermines some of my control so I don't like to do it okay so um, now I've got a uh, null and I'll uh, normally I'd rename it of course but let's say I want to move it around so um, I need something to move it around with. I need a device. And you'll notice there's no device listed here because there's none in the scene. Now why they, I, they have other things that we haven't added to the scene yet that are listed here. But for some reason, Motion Builder doesn't um, include devices as a standard default component here. So when you look for it, it's a little frustrating the first 10 times you use the app if you don't have somebody telling you otherwise. You have to go over to Asset Browser, click in Devices, and pick on something that you uh, know you have. You could use Keyboard. Um, there's lots of other options here. But in order to do Analog Control, Mouse, Joystick, Spaceball, there are only a few options that will give you really good uh, walk-on tablet, perhaps. Uh, but most of those are very difficult to use in an analog environment, and a joystick is the one I'm comfortable with. Um, I have uh, in the past written specialized device things for um, larger consoles that I've used that have lots of analog controls. So I can have 64 analog controls at once or 32 or something, but I don't have that access here at Universal. So joystick is all I've got that's useful at all. So if you click on it and drag it into the scene, but don't drag it onto an object, Actually, I don't know what it does when you try to drag it onto an object, but uh, many things don't work well when you do that. Once I've dragged it into the scene, it shows up on this device list. Devices is now there, and there's a joystick. This is red next to the online. That means it's not in use. It's disabled. Uh, it used to be that in order to shut Motion Builder down or even switch files, you had to actively disable the joystick or when you opened up the new file or redid anything and tried to use a joystick it would crash the system or just fail to work and be very confusing. I believe they fixed that um, but I still don't trust much about how devices are used. Devices are uh, used through the Windows OS interface so if you have something that Windows recognizes as a joystick natively um, it will automatically show up here as a device, which is fortunate for us because we have these Xbox controllers that uh, mimic standard Microsoft joysticks and have a number of uh, five axis, ten buttons, 
show up automatically. I don't have to do anything extraordinarily, sorry, extraordinary. And I can uh, then use it in a constraint. I'm going to cut this video off and go into uh, relation constraints next.